If you've seen pictures of beautiful boards on the internet and been wondering what it all takes to build one for yourself, this video is for you. I've got five things you need to do to fully prepare you for the process. Catch you after the break. Hey guys, it's me Merlin, your keyboard wizard. And if you're looking for keyboard reviews, the latest news in group buys, and just how this community all works, you're here in the right place. Let's get right into it. If you're new to building, chances are you don't really know what's inside this. The first thing you need to do is to learn the different components of a keyboard. Typically speaking, you need a keyboard chassis, which is your outer shell of your keyboard. This can be made of pretty much any material, the most popular being plastic or aluminum. A printed circuit board, or PCB for short. This is the brains behind your keyboard. Without this, you're pretty much left with a very expensive paperweight. PCBs can be either hot swap or soldered. With a soldered PCB, you will need a soldering iron. I recommend anything that gives you a temperature control. I specifically use a Weller WS51, which I've had since before I entered this hobby. For a hot saw PCB, there really aren't any special tools involved as you can easily insert the switches with your fingers. Software. For most custom keyboards, this is a two-part deal. The firmware that is installed onto the keyboard and the GUI that is installed onto your computer. Software allows you to remap your board any way you want, add layers so you can still have function keys on a 60%, or even control your RGB lighting. There are many different firmwares available, but the one that is most popular in the community at the moment is called QMK Firmware. Stabilizers. These components help stabilize keys that are greater than 1.75U key units, such as your backspace, enter keys, shifts, and definitely that spacebar. Plate. These hold your switches in place and keep them aligned. Depending on the design of your keyboard, sometimes the plate is optional. Switches. These are what make your keyboard mechanical. For the most part, we'll probably be looking at MX switches, and you typically have your choice between three variants. Linear, tactile, and clicky. Last but not the least, keycaps. These cover the switches and allow you to actually type on them. Thankfully, quite a few kids these days come with all the parts you need, minus switches and keycaps, so it's relatively simple. However, each of these components have a ton of options, which leads me to my next point. Do your research. This hobby may seem very simple from the surface, but it can be quite the rabbit hole. Features to the components you are buying, read reviews, learn the different types of mods, learn what the upcoming keyboards are, yeah, I know it's pretty overwhelming, but don't worry. You don't need to learn it all tonight or even in a week. Take your time, there's a lot to learn. You don't even need to acquire this knowledge by picking apart threads on a message board. The community has a wealth of published knowledge that you can check out. A couple sources that I recommend are the Key Company's Keyboard University. They have a very well-structured curriculum detailing many aspects of this hobby. There are other alternatives, but I personally think TKC has a very thorough outline. Other ways you can research are by joining a community, which is actually my next point. There's only so much you can learn by reading through text. Some things just make more sense in the context of a discussion. Places that I like to frequent the most are the Mechanical Keyboard subreddit, Geek Hack, and several different Discord servers. A large reason why I've been part of this hobby for so long is because of the community. While we do have a fair number of toxic people, a majority of people are kind, helpful, and awesome. Being part of the community, such as the ones I recommended above, allows you to have access to their help chat and even make new friends. Honestly, if you guys just watch YouTube videos, you really only limit yourself to very few opinions. While I do process a great deal of knowledge regarding mechanical keyboards, in a preference-driven hobby like ours, my opinion is really no more important than the next. Join any Discord server and you're guaranteed to hear many opinions from people of all backgrounds. I do have to point out that there is one drawback. If you're a type of person where having many choices is confusing, you might have some trouble here. But like I said earlier, take your time, soak it in. You don't have to buy a keyboard right this instant. My fourth point is setting up a budget. You may be wondering why I put this closer to the end when starting with a budget is 
usually the first in most lists, right? I'm going to argue that you don't know what budget to set if you don't even know what you're getting yourself into. I'll argue that my previous points 1 to 3 are precursors to giving you the right knowledge to know what budget to set, or even if this is a hobby you want to get into. Okay, what if you have a hard limit to your budget, let's say maybe uh, 50 bucks? If you've gone through points 1 to 3, then you know without a shadow of a doubt that custom keyboards are probably too expensive for you. But with the information that you have learned, you can now filter out all the custom keyboard info from your searches. Who knows, when times are better and you have a little more disposable income, you can come back to it anytime you want. My last point for you is to watch a keyboard build stream. A keyboard build stream is when a streamer quite literally builds a keyboard on stream from start to finish. Depending on the complexity of the build, this can last anywhere from one to three, maybe even four hours. This usually serves the purpose of showing off a new product or more importantly, how one would build such a keyboard in a step-by-step -step process. If you're like me, you're a visual learner. I pour through hours of text before I feel like I can get a solid understanding of a subject. But if someone just shows me how it's done, I get it just like that. In 2022, we have a lot of custom keyboard content on Twitch and YouTube. But honestly, we don't have every configuration of a custom keyboard. But I would bet that pretty much every custom keyboard build has been recorded somewhere on the internet, right? As a further point, I recommend you watch build streams live. That way you can ask the streamers questions or even have them show you something more clearly. I stream several times a week, with Saturdays being my build streams. Stop by and say hi. If you've been looking how to even start with your first custom keyboard project, hopefully these five tips have helped point you in the right direction. Whether you're brand new or been in this hobby for a long while, let me know in the comments which of these five points have helped you out the most. I'll see you guys in the next video. Goodbye now.